I hope that God has led in your life in a very special way during the last month since we saw each other. I know that there is a great conflict happening on earth today, nearing an explosion point. You can watch on the internet, you can watch little pieces on YouTube, you can watch, read CNN, uh, some of the news reports, you can uh, read your newspapers. Something is happening in the world today that has tremendous import to what God's people are going to face in the future. The nations are positioning themselves. Great nations, large nations, and small nations positioning themselves along the front lines to prepare for battle. And people are choosing sides. And God is leading His people in many ways. He's pouring out His Spirit. Everywhere I go in the world, I see people making decisions. I don't know if you've been making decisions lately. What side are you on? Who do you serve anyway? Where does your loyalty lie? These are decisions that have to be made by every single person. And if you haven't been making some very clear decisions, your decision is being made already for you. I, I, can't, I can't express my gratefulness to the young people that came from Bolivia. There were some Mexicans. There were some Central Americans. There were some North Americans all working together and they decided two weeks ago to have a, a, an, a weekend of special missionary emphasis from Wednesday to Sunday at Morelos University in Mexico. I had just left South America, went up to Canada for a speaking appointment with It Is Written. I flew back down to Mexico and joined them and they flew the airplane up full of young people, young aggressive missionaries for God. They flew to Mexico we had the week together. Forty young people from the university chose to be missionary volunteers. Many of them doctors and nurses, dentists, others still in school. But it was such a good explosion that the, the president of the university declared that they must have that every year. And he wants to send missionaries all over the world. And so after that, I left and I headed north with the airplane to catch my plane to uh, Malaysia for ASI meetings, and then on to Thailand and on to the Philippines. Uh, the other plane headed south, and as they dropped off a passenger in Guatemala and headed for Colombia and Bolivia, it was late at night, 10 o'clock at night. They were flying over the ocean, 50 miles offshore, when suddenly they lost all oil pressure. And they had to turn the airplane and head to shore. They got permission from the Nicaraguan government to make an emergency landing. But the, but the government told them, we don't have any runways with lights. So the plane circled around, saw nothing, the engine seized for lack of oil, and the pilot, our chief pilot, decided to make a landing in the dark. And he landed in the dark trees, and fortunately, through God's blessing, they landed primarily in a banana plantation. And the soft trees absorbed a lot of it. One mango tree ripped off one wing, and they came to a stop. Everybody was pulled out. There was gasoline, but no fire. And within 15 minutes, everybody was in a major hospital. A miracle from God. Everybody survived, but we have one young lady that still has some spinal compression symptoms. She's a physician herself. And uh, we've been trying to get an airplane to take her from Guad uh, Nicaragua to Mexico to get some better attention. I wish my heart has been heavy today because I've been thinking of her all alone in the hospital. She needs better attention. She needs a neurosurgeon. And none of the pilots that I know, my friends in the U.S., are willing to make the flight. No, no, I don't want to. They don't realize what it takes to sacrifice. Everybody wants to be comfortable. It's Christmas time. We don't want to fly down south. We don't want to do this. My airplane is not equipped. My airplane is not insured. Every reason in the world and I said, Lord, why am I here instead of over there right now? If I was over there, I would have left last night. I would have flown all night. In the morning, I would have been in Nicaragua, and today I would have been in Mexico City with her. Unfortunately, I'm not there. And so I called a few minutes ago before I came in. It's 6 o'clock in the morning, and I said, did you find any pilots willing to go? And my son-in-law said, no, I called everybody. We're looking at it from everywhere, but no pilots are willing to go. And I, my heart was said, that's why, that's why it's... You know, to be a missionary pilot is not just to learn how to fly an airplane. You have to be a missionary first 
and then be a pilot. And this applies to every profession that God has. Whatever you're, whatever you're studying in school, it's useless to God. Unless, first of all, you're a missionary. So what if you're a doctor? If you're selfish, God can't use you. What if you're a pilot? If you only think of yourself, God can't use you. But God is looking for missionaries that happen to be pilot, dentists, doctors, nurses, teachers, engineers, construction, uh, every type of skill possible. But number one, missionary. And we're going we're gonna to look at some things tonight. You see, the church is about ready to go through a tremendous trauma, maybe as early as the next few months. The world is going to go through a trauma first, and then the church will follow soon after. And uh, the evidence, uh, when I was here last time, I, I spoke about the coming crisis. I spoke about a time when the world would be, North America especially, would be about to crash. That is already history. North America has already entered its final stages of a financial collapse. And uh, the currency that we've known as the U.S. dollar is about to disappear forever. And um, with that, many Seventh-day Adventists will lose their lifetime savings. They will lose their assets. And they will cry to God and say, Lord, if only I would have known. I would have used my money. It's almost too late. Americans have not been ready for this. And many people that have heard the this news that something was about to happen. The sermon I preached in April was one of the most downloaded sermons I have ever preached. It was downloaded off the internet nearly 20,000 times. And people have been requesting free CDs and free DVDs. And we've handed out nearly 20,000 of those. There's a desperate need. What's going to happen? And anything that happens in the States will affect the Philippines very fast. You know that, right? Because all the ships that are chained to the Titanic will go down with the Titanic. And so the trauma that is about to come over North America will severely affect the Philippines too. And so one has to ask themselves, what would we do if our life is suddenly changed and we lose almost everything? What, what would we do? Would we forget God, complain to God? Would we say, well, Lord, if you're not going to give me a nice, comfortable church and a good job and, and sufficient to live, then I don't want to serve you anymore. Many people will do that. Many people will abandon God when times get hard. And therefore, you are making your decisions which side you're on even tonight. God is preparing a people and he's calling to his people. Now I'm going to share with you some thoughts from the book Christian Service. Now some of you might remember what we, what we call these little red books. Does anybody remember what the code word I use for red books? Military intelligence. When you're fighting a war, every general knows that you have to know what the enemy is thinking and what he's about to do. You understand that, right? Can you fight a war in ignorance and win? No. You have to have satellites. You have to have spy airplanes. I, saw, I read about a war that was fought with Israel. And Israel had developed these little airplanes this big and a little tiny pod with a camera. And it was radio controlled and the, and the plane would take off and it would circle high above the enemy and the camera would be looking down, taking pictures of all the enemy positions and the generals were sitting there in a, in a dark room with big old large screen TVs watching the war. And they would look at the enemy and say, move here, shoot there, do this. And, and they were controlling this because they had a spy aircraft that the radar could not see. And they would circle above there. And you can't shoot down a little airplane that's only about two yards across. The, the missile would never see it. It's, the engine is too small. And so, and so the, I realized how important it is that we have military intelligence and God in his mercy, knowing how deceptive the times would be, knowing how the enemy has been setting up the human race for 6,000 years for the greatest deception of all times. God has given us not only his word, where we found what we believe, our doctrines, our beliefs, the clear revealed word of God, but he's also told us what the enemy is about to do. And I want to share some thoughts from this little book called Christian Service. Uh, before I do, I, wanna, I want to talk about one, two more things relating to military intelligence. In the Second World War, there were, there, there, there were um, two countries that were fighting each other, and I, did, I mean, among all the countries, 
and England was